holidays to all of you beautiful people. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm May and I just talk about the things I like. Thank you so much for over 500 subscribers. Amazingly, this channel has grown so much in a short amount of time and all I can say is thank you and hope this channel will continue to grow. You guys are awesome. I would not be here without you. Today we are finally at the last redesign with Gabriel Agrest and as the title says, Felix Graham de Vanilli. I have been holding the secret for a long time and finally I get to share it with you guys. Consider it as a Christmas or holiday present that you did not ask for. You're welcome. Gabriel and Felix are two interesting characters in Miraculous. No matter how you feel about either one of them, you have to admit that they do add a lot to the story. Gabriel is a mysterious grieving man who is hiding a major secret and Felix has an unknown motive that is slowly revealing itself in the series. Hopefully season 5 will serve more emphasis on both characters. I'm excited to share these redesigns with you all, but before we begin, make sure you follow my Instagram. I tend to post small sneak peeks there as well as they are for my videos. The link will be in the description. With that being said, let's start with Gabriel's redesign. Where do I even begin with this bozo? As we all know, Gabriel Agreste is the main antagonist in Miraculous. His goal is to capture Ladybug and Cat Noir's Miraculous so that he can make a wish to bring back his comatose wife. To help achieve his goals, he uses the Butterfly Miraculous to make supervillains from his Akumas. Even though he has a motive and powers that can be a major threat to our heroes, I feel Gabriel is more of a comedic relief villain. Every time he's on screen, I can never take him seriously because the writers are violating him with these bad angles or animating Gabriel to run like this. Also, Gabriel is a fashion designer but has a plain supervillain costume. Maybe it's because Hawk Moth usually stays in his lair and uses akumatized victims to do his work. But come on, how can Hawk Moth and Shadow Moth look like Larry Boy, Bible Man, and Rey Mysterio at the same time? Shadow Noir? Burnt Leslie. Monarch? I don't even want to discuss Monarch. All I can say is there's some sort of crisis going on. But I'm not a fashionista or anything, so who am I to judge? Also, his attitude. Gabriel is described to be a sympathetic villain, but from what I have seen, the Miraculous fandom thinks otherwise. In my opinion, Gabriel is a sympathetic villain, but his attitude makes the audience believe he is not. I think it has a lot to do with how angry and irrational Gabriel is. Think about it this way. If your friend came up to you angrily and started ranting about a problem they have, how would you feel? Instantly, you would start to get defensive because they are coming in strong, or you would get angry as well. That's what I feel Gabriel is to the audience. He's a very angry man and acts on his impulses without thinking twice. So naturally, we would get a bit irritated when he is on screen. This is the same effect we would feel with Chloe or Lila. But we also see him as a desperate man who wants to feed his selfish desires while neglecting the emotional needs of his son. Great job, Gabe. Father of the year. Despite all that, Gabriel has had many moments where he shows that all he wants is to fix this mess, resurrect his wife, and finally reunite his family. I just wish we had more vulnerable moments with Gabriel Agrest as we did in seasons 2 and 3. Not to mention, more backstory on Emily because that would add a lot to his character as well. Another thing I wanted to mention was the Hawk Moth rap. It's an iconic piece of art and it should have been in a Christmas special. But something I wanted to point out about the song is a particular verse. In the song, Gabriel quotes that the heroes waste preventing crimes. This is very true when you think about it. The only time the heroes were going to do the simplest thing was in Simple Man, where they decided to fight Shadow Moth head on. And even after that episode, they still waste time doing the same patterns and have gotten nowhere close to finding Hawk Moth's identity since they debunked it in Season 2. I could argue and say that Gabriel has not made progress either when it comes to defeating the heroes, but at least he has all of the other Miraculouses and has a better chance at winning. It's just his obsession that halts him from making better decisions. You should not be outsmarted by 14 year olds, my guy. With season 5 being pretty rough on cult leader Gabriel, all I can say is I hope nothing bad happens to him because I do like his character and his antics never fail to make me feel disappointed or put me in a good mood. I know a lot of people in the fandom dislike Gabriel for many valid reasons, but I come to appreciate his character and sometimes I do root for him because I'm tired of the shenanigans our heroes constantly get into.
For Gabriel's redesign, I decided to take a different approach to his style to reflect his backstory and personality. Although he is a fashion designer, Gabriel tries his best to look and act normal despite his circumstances. The people around him believe that he dresses less flashy because of the death of his wife, but little did I know, there is more to the story. In Miraculous, Gabriel is a grieving man, but his original color palette consists of mainly bright colors, specifically white and red. I've always adored when Gabriel wore black, like in his portrait with Adrian and in the season 4 episode Gabriel Aggressed. I wanted to incorporate black into Gabriel's design to reflect his grief for Emily and keep him in mystery. I decided to keep his red pants but chose a darker and more saturated shade to help him stand out. As we all know, it has been shown a few times now that Gabriel was originally a brunette. Since Gabriel is an older man but not exactly an elder, I gave him brown hair with his roots fading into grey instead of his bleach blonde hair. And finally, I darkened his lower lids to show how restless Gabriel is from his new mission and to show how his grief affected him physically. Before I get into Gabriel's backstory, I do want to provide a content warning for murder. I have provided a timestamp when it is mentioned, so if you do not want to hear or feel uncomfortable with this type of content, you are free to skip it. Another thing for me to mention, for Gabriel's story to flow better, I needed to change the sequence of events of Adrian's story. Emily starts to become sick in Adrian's junior year and passes away toward the end of Adrian's senior year. Any other changes will be mentioned in the story. With that being said, Let's get into it. Gabriel Agreste, the son of well-known entrepreneurs. His life was not always easy, especially when it came to his family. His parents had high expectations for their son. They raised him to be a well-rounded young man who excels in everything he does. It would look good for the family business after all. However, Gabriel was different. As much as he was interested in taking over the family business, Gabriel loved fashion. At school, he would be bullied and be called names because of it although Gabriel did not let this phase him. His parents grew concerned for their son's hobby. What would this mean for the family business? His parents would refuse to acknowledge his talents and disapprove of his dreams to own his own fashion agency. Gabriel was heartbroken, but to not disappoint his family, he would agree and give up on his dreams. He would learn about his parents' business and start to make a better example for the family standards, although he was not happy. When Gabriel became a young adult, it was time for him to officially join the family business. To celebrate, his parents hosted an event and invited many known influencers from around the world. Gabriel was not fond of this party and went outside to cool his head. When he exited his house, he stumbled upon a woman around his age. At first, Gabriel was enamored by her beauty. She introduced herself as Emily Graham de Vanilli, the daughter of aristocrats and an actress based in London. Since that evening, the two became close. Although they had a long-distance relationship in the beginning, they were determined to make it work. Emily was the light of Gabriel's world. She filled his life with wonder and warmth, and most importantly, love. After showing Emily his old sketches, she would encourage him to start his agency. Gabriel even denied that it would even happen, but Emily persisted and reassured him that he could do this and that she believed in him. And with that, Gabriel would start building the foundations of his career. Gabriel would eventually meet Emily's twin sister, Amelie, and her fiancé, later husband, Colt Fathom, the son of an American billionaire. Now, Colt and Gabriel were not exactly buddy-buddy. Colt was starting his own fashion agency in London. His designs were amazing, flawless even. The two were rivals, but tried to keep things professional. Gabriel and Emily would get married, and Gabriel would finally start his business, but it was not a success at the start. He was not able to hire anyone to help him with this agency, nor did he have connections since his parents cut him off. Gabriel would even feel inferior to his rival as his business grew. To cheer up her husband, Emily would take him on a trip to Tibet to help clear his mind. On this trip, Gabriel would discover two brooches, one shaped like a butterfly and the other a peacock. At the end of their trip, Gabriel would give the peacock-shaped brooch to his wife. As she humbly accepted the gift, she put on the brooch and that's where their lives started to change. They discovered that the brooches were not ordinary, but rather magic. A small creature emerged from the brooch, introducing itself as Dusu. The creature would explain its ability to give the user the power to create senti monsters out of a person's emotions. As crazy as it sounded, it was the answer to Gabriel's problems. The two would return to France and would start their experiment. 
Emily used a Miraculous to transform into a peacock-themed superhero. Gabriel grabbed a random object and handed it to Emily. She joined the Amok to the object and a Sentinel monster was created, taking the form of a human. Emily and Gabriel were ecstatic that it worked. They would use the Senti monster as a personal assistant, naming her Natalie St. Cour. They would continue making Senti monsters out of various objects to help the agency grow. Gabriel would start to get recognition and would soon become mainstream. Emily would join his agency and start becoming a model full-time to show her support. Colt would start to grow suspicious of Gabriel's newfound fame. How odd is it that his rival would suddenly grow miraculously after his trip? Years would pass and Emily and Gabriel wanted to expand their family. Unfortunately, Emily could not bear children of her own. The couple was disappointed, but hope was not lost. They decided to use the Peacock Miraculous to create a new form of life. Using one of the twin rings, they brought their new son, Adrian Agreste, to life. Fans would theorize how this came to be, but neither Emily nor Gabriel would answer. However, there were two people they did answer to, Amelie and her husband, Colt. The two would take a trip to visit their nephew and would ask how this was possible. Emily, wanting to at least be honest with her sister, told her sister about the Peacock Miraculous and the powers it gives its user. Colt and Amelie were shocked to hear this, but they could also benefit from this. Colt decided to press further about the matter to find out the truth about Gabriel's sudden growth. Gabriel would admit to using the Peacock Miraculous to help his agency grow. Colt would then use his newfound information to blackmail Gabriel. It would not look good for his business if his clients knew he did not start fairly. Colt would remain silent if they agreed to create a child for him and his wife, for she also could not bear any children. They accepted this deal in terms that Gabriel and Emily would keep the object of Amelie's and Colt's new child. Emily would then create a son for her sister, who would name him Felix. After the creation of Felix and Adrian, Emily and Gabriel would slowly find no need for the miraculous anymore and would leave it in a safe place. Gabriel was happy. His agency was successful, almost surpassing his enemies. He had an amazing life and was blessed with a son. Everything was perfect until Adrian's junior year. Colt would arrive in France to ask Gabriel for a favor to upgrade his agency. Colt requested that Emily would make Senti monsters for his business. Of course, Gabriel would deny his rival's request. Why would he ever help his business grow? But then again, Colt had tricks up his sleeves. He threatened to harm Gabriel's business, along with putting Gabriel's family in danger if his request was not fulfilled. Colt was a ruthless man, and Gabriel knew not to fight him. Of course, he wanted to protect his livelihood, so he obliged. Emily would use the Peacock Miraculous once again after many years, but this time, the aftermath was different. After creating multiple Senti monsters for Colt, Emily would start to get dizzy spells. Every day she would start to get worse from her unknown condition. Even doctors were unable to find out what was wrong. Gabriel grew frustrated. Managing his business and taking care of his sick wife took a toll on him. He was desperate to find a cause of this mysterious illness, but he found nothing. Eventually, Emily was barely responsive towards Adrian's senior year. Gabriel was upset about the love of his life slowly slipping from him. He would talk to her every day in hopes that one day, she would have the strength to respond and tell him that everything was fine. On one winter night, Colt summoned Gabriel to London for a private meeting. Gabriel did not want to leave his wife, not whilst she was in the state. But he feared what his enemy would do if he did not show. Gabriel would arrive later that evening at Colt's manor. No one else but Colt was home that night, Gabriel assumed. Colt greeted Gabriel at the door and led him to his office. Colt took a seat at his desk and offered Gabriel to sit on the chair placed on the other side. Colt brought a cup and poured strong wine for himself. Colt then started up a conversation about business while taking sips of his wine. Of course, Gabriel knew what he wanted, another favor, but this one was extreme. Colt requested that Gabriel would step down and flee the fashion agency for good. Gabriel was flabbergasted at this. Of course, Gabriel denied his request. It was ridiculous for him to even ask. Colt was not happy with this response. Colt brought his same threats and went as far as to lay his hands on Gabriel. Gabriel stood firmly and denied Colt's offer again. He was willing to fight for the life he had worked hard for. He was not going to lose it all just because of a petty dispute. But suddenly, Colt started to attack Gabriel. The two would start to fight, thrashing their bodies everywhere in the room, neither of them wanting to lose this fight. At some point, 
Colt would start to become tipsy from the wine, losing his sense of strength. Gabriel took his chance to defend himself. Using all of his upper body strength, he pushed Colt away from him and towards the desk. Colt lost his balance and violently, the back of his head crashed against the desk. He fell to the floor and did not get up. In horror, Gabriel rushed to Colt's body in fear of what he had done. Colt was unresponsive and blood was quickly spreading across the floor. Gabriel panicked. He knew he couldn't go to the police. His business would fail and his loving family would despise him and cast him out as if he was merely nothing. He had to act fast. Anyone could arrive home at any minute. Gabriel quickly fled the scene, hoping that no one saw him at the manor that night. When he arrived home, he went to visit his wife again, but his worst fear came to light. Emily had passed away. This was soul crushing for Gabriel. He was constantly paranoid that he would get caught for the murder of Cold Fathom and that his beautiful, loving wife was no longer alive in his world with him. Gabriel would move Emily's body to the repository of his manor, leaving her in a glass casket to try and preserve her body. Gabriel would start to distance himself from his son, in fear of him finding out about his crime. He didn't know what to do at that point. One day, Gabriel picked up the peacock miraculous to help himself remember his wife, but he felt something odd. He turned the miraculous over to find that it was broken. Scurrying to find an answer, he found the butterfly miraculous and activated it, summoning the Kwame, Nuru. Gabriel begged for answers, asking Nuru about the consequences of using a broken miraculous. Needless to say, Gabriel finally understood why his wife fell ill, all because she used the broken peacock miraculous. Gabriel wept, lamenting to Nuru that everything was wrong. He lives in fear of everything falling from his grasp. The world around him will be destroyed and everything would be his fault, wishing that he could fix everything. To his surprise, Nuru told him that there was a way to fix everything. Obtaining the ladybug and cat miraculous was the answer. Before he could start his mission, he had to take a few extra precautions. First, to make sure his son was safe at all times, Gabriel hid Adrian's ring containing his amok in the garden where Emily and Adrian would spend time together, locking it with a statue of his wife for extra measure. Then, he would start to wear the ring that contained Felix's amok. In case anyone would try to control Adrian, they would control Felix instead. And lastly, he would allow Adrian to go to college so that his son would not be around or suspect any of his father's wrongdoing. Finally, Gabriel was ready. It was time he right the wrongs he had done and save his family once and for all. In my rewrite, Gabriel is suffering the loss of his wife while also dealing with the fact that he had robbed the life of his enemy. As I said before, Gabriel tends to be angry and irrational. I wanted to change that for my AU. I wanted Gabriel to be more sorrowful than angry. He may be irrational at times, but it stems from his desperation of achieving his goals. In his vulnerable state, he only trusts Natalie to help him with his mission, but will easily trust another person if he thinks it would benefit him. For Hawkmoth and Shadowmoth's redesign, I wanted to bring more to both suits. For Hawkmoth's design, I was heavily influenced by the 2004 film, The Phantom of the Opera. I found that both the Phantom and Gabriel had two similarities. They both mainly hide in the shadows while attacking the innocent, and their motives to wreak havoc is because of their respective love interest. Hawkmoth himself is a pretty theatrical villain. Let's be honest, he would thrive on Broadway. I did like the fashion in The Phantom of the Opera, and I wanted to do my own spin on it. Settling on a purple suit with a sharp tailcoat to represent butterfly wings and a sheer bodysuit with lantern sleeves. For both Hawkmoth's and Shadowmoth's hair, I wanted it to be black just like the Phantom. I have no other reasons but that. I also decided to add pumps for both Hawkmoth and Shadowmoth inspired by the Collector, aka the best Gabriel Agress design, to bring femininity to both suits. For Shadow Moth's design, I wanted to keep the same formality as Hawk Moth's original suit but turn it into a casino look while keeping some aspects of the Phantom. With the Peacock Miraculous Save to use, he has more cards to play against the heroes. For my rewrite, I wanted the Butterfly and Peacock Miraculous to work the same as it does in the show, since I don't see any issues with them. The only change I will add to the Peacock Miraculous is that to get rid of a senti monster, the wielder has to have the object containing the amok. Without the object, the holder will have no power over the senti monster, 
is the same as having the object to control the senti monster. Felix has to be one of the most interesting characters that came to the series. We all know that Felix is just Adrian's first concept that was drafted because he was too dark for the show. And that's fine for the showrunners to think that, it's their show after all. But what I don't get is why they made him identical to Adrian. I, I never understood that. <laughs> I find it kind of illogical that if Felix was created by Emily and Gabriel, they would make a carbon copy of their son and give him to Amelie, thinking that it was not strange or would not cause a controversy. But if no one in the show questions it, I shouldn't either. But let me tell you, before I was introduced to the Senti Monster Theory, I believed that Gabriel had an affair with Amelie because it was the only logical explanation at the time. But now with the idea of Senti Monsters coming into play, I guess it's all right that the two would be identical, but I, I still don't think it makes sense. Another thing I was confused about is Felix's purpose in Miraculous. In his first episode, Felix, he is introduced as Adrian's look-alike cousin. He is mischievous and likes to cause trouble. His goal in that episode was to take back the twin rings that originally belonged to the Grand de Vanilli family, which he does achieve in the end, but only obtaining one. Fast forward to season 4, Felix seems to have more to him than was ever let on. He manages to find out Gabriel's secret identity and grabs the peacock Miraculous. This could seem like he is the next villain of Miraculous, but I don't think so. To me, Felix feels more like an anti-hero, kinda like Deadpool or Nagito Kamaida. Felix does not need to help the heroes or the villains unless it would benefit him, simply doing things for himself. Season 4 was hinting that Felix and Adrian are senti monsters, which reveals a piece of the puzzle of Felix's motives. I know Season 5 goes into depth about Felix's character, but I have not seen the episode and I'm waiting for it to come out in the dub but feel free to talk about it in the comments with a spoiler warning. I think Felix is a great character and can add a lot to the plot of Miraculous, but as I said in Chloe and Lila's video, I don't like how Felix managed to reveal Hawkmoth's identity and swipe the Peacock Miraculous within four episodes, while Lila, on the other hand, was hinted to be the next Hawkmoth or the next villain. Homegirl is still giving Gabriel tiny pieces of information to this day. She's not doing anything! Overall, I do look forward to the development of Felix in Season 5 and getting more information that will confirm or deny the Senti Monster Theory. Felix's design has been stuck with me since the day I published Chloe and Lila's video. That night, I drew Adrian's first concept and Felix shortly followed. As soon as I created Felix, I was sure I wanted Adrian and Felix to be Senti Monsters, but not Senti Monster Twins. The first thing I established was that there had to be distinct differences between the two. Felix has straight brown hair and his clothes consist of cool colors, while Adrian has curly blonde hair and his clothes consist of neutral colors. I also wanted the two to dress differently, with Felix being more formal and Adrian casual. In my rewrite, Felix is an intern at Gabriel's company. The first design on the left is Felix's work attire, and the design on the right is Felix's everyday outfit. I used these references for both outfits from Pinterest. For Felix's work attire, I always wanted his suit to be blue, but for his casual wear, I thought it would be nice to keep the same theme. I always liked the idea of Felix wearing blue instead of his usual black and gray clothing. I thought it would bring him out as a character and give him a calm and collected nature. Felix's story will be shorter than Gabriel's. For Felix's story, I wanted to add emphasis to Gabriel's story while setting up Felix's motive and role for my rewrite. This is the story of Felix Graham de Vanilli. Growing up in London, Felix had a happy childhood. His mother and father loved him with all of their might and they cherished every moment with one another. Felix was also very close to his cousin Adrian, often visiting France to see him and his aunt and uncle. On one occasion, while Felix was at Adrian's house, they got into a little problem. While roughhousing, they accidentally broke Emily's peacock brooch. Adrian was scared. He knew how much the brooch meant to his parents and was keen on telling them what had happened. Not wanting to get in trouble, Felix convinced Adrian not to tell anyone. They both agreed to put the brooch in its original place and hoped that Gabriel or Emily would never find out that it was broken because of them. 
Years would pass after this incident if Felix was in his last year of high school, preparing to go to college and work with his father at his fashion agency. One evening, his father told Felix that he was expecting a guest for a meeting. Of course, Felix did not think much of it. His father was always hosting meetings, and this was nothing new to him. Felix would then go to sleep for the night. In the middle of his slumber, Felix would be awakened by the sound of a loud thump coming from outside of his room. He assumed that it was just his mother arriving home from her trip, but something did not feel right. Cautiously, Felix would leave his bed and open his room door. He left a small crack so that he was able to see outside of his room. He managed to spot a figure fleeing his home, though he did not recognize the man. Felix questioned why he would leave in such a hurry, but assumed that he had things to take care of. Felix shrugged it off and went back to sleep. Deep into his sleep, Felix was awakened again by the sound of a loud shriek. Now he knew something was wrong. Felix burst out of his room and followed the sounds of loud sobs and screams coming from his father's office. He saw his mother sobbing and shaking at the threshold. Felix rushed to his mother's side to try and comfort her. He looked up to see what could bring his mother this much sorrow. The horror on his face when he saw his father lying on the ground with a pool of blood underneath him. Trying to stay strong for his mother, Felix quickly called for help. When the police arrived at the scene, they immediately got to work. Amelie sat paralyzed with fear. Felix tried to stay strong, but in the back of his mind, he blamed himself, thinking that if he had checked on his father earlier, maybe he would have been alive at that moment. Alongside his father's death, his aunt would also pass away. His mother was in deep grief after these two losses. Felix remained close to his mother during this process, neither of them wanting to lose the other. Amelie and Felix would then be brought into questioning, and with no connections found, the authorities would inform the two that they would be sure to investigate the matter further, but for now, they concluded that Colt's death was an accident taking place while he was under the influence. That's when Felix remembered someone else was there that night. Determined to find the truth, Felix would start to examine his father's office. He remembered that his father recorded all of his meetings to keep note of what was discussed. Plot convenient, I know. While searching through his office, Felix managed to find his father's tape recorder. He played the tape, listening carefully for any indication of what happened that night. The tape revealed that the mysterious figure was none other than his uncle and that he had harmed Felix's father, causing his death. Felix was shocked, but was also angry. His uncle had taken everything from him, his father, his mother's well-being, and his father's business. With this proof, he could present this to the authorities and make his uncle pay for what he has done. But that would be too easy. Felix wanted revenge. He wanted to see Gabriel lose everything he cared about. He knew just what to do, starting with an internship at his uncle's fashion agency. Felix takes up an internship at Gabriel's company so that he can have a way to sabotage and destroy his uncle's livelihood. But he can't achieve his goals alone without looking suspicious. Alongside him, there is another intern who seems to have a close connection with Gabriel Agrest. He teams up with them to achieve their goal to take down Gabriel for their selfish reasons. This person is none other than Lila Rossi. Finally, we are ending the redesigns with Gabriel Agrest, Hawk Moth, Shadow Moth, and Felix Graham de Vanilli. I'm so happy with the results and I'm excited that I finally get to share them with you. It has been an amazing ride so far, so thank you so much for your support. If you like this video and if you're interested in this series, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you won't miss when I post another video. As always, the art from this video will be posted to my Instagram, as well as updates for the rewrites and many more videos to come. The link will be in the description. I also love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Discussions are always welcome. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.